Welcome back to another OMLAB tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Groove and more specifically uh, a cool little tool called a Groove template. It's a way that we can kind of quote unquote steal the Groove from one sound and apply it to another sound in our project. And that other, the, the sound that we're, we're, we're I guess harvesting the uh, Groove from can be pretty much anything. Um, but it's best used uh, when the Groove is rhythmic, when, when the the element that we are taking the groove template from is rhythmic. Okay, so uh, for this example, what we're going to use is just a simple beat, and we'll go ahead and we'll loop this. It's a two bar beat here. Okay, uh, now the reason why we chose a two bar loop is just because most of these groove template algorithms uh, work best with about two bars worth of information. Okay, now of course any of them can handle uh, many more uh, bars, a, a lot more audio, um, but as the audio clip becomes longer, or MIDI clip uh, becomes longer, there's more information that needs to be considered and processed by the Groove template, template algorithm. Okay, uh, so it's best to, to find a really juicy uh, piece of music or a beat or whatever uh, that you think, um, you know, clearly represents uh, the groove in the music that you're wanting to apply to your own track or your own instrument, okay? Uh, and we'll just put together a quick little example here of how you could actually apply this um, in the real world, okay? So just really quick, um, there's a big difference between quantizing and using groove templates and, and and swing for that matter you know swing is delaying everything by a certain number of milliseconds basically or, or, or part of a beat depending upon how that swing engine is actually built uh, quantization is looking at some very black and white uh, you know, clear lines drawn in the sand. We're we're gonna we're gonna quantize to an eighth note, to to a quarter note, to a sixteenth note, um, and everything gets shifted accordingly. Uh, but when it comes to the groove, and we've mentioned this before in prior tutorials, the groove can be found in the spaces between the notes played. Okay, um, and that balance of positive and negative space um, is not just critical to. Um, getting across the emotion and the feelings and the energy of, of, of the music that the artist is wanting to convey. Um, it's, it's, it's an aesthetic that we as modern producers can now use um, as one more paintbrush, basically, as we're painting our new masterpieces. You know, we're working in this totally nonlinear uh, fashion, and, and that means that we can now import elements of other people's um, artwork basically uh, without ever actually showing any of the art. We don't have to use any of the, the sounds from those songs or those beats or whatever. Um, and you can create your own. Um, I'm a drummer by trade so if I want to lay down a quick beat uh, it's much easier for me to do so um, you know behind a real kit and then if I was to bring that into a project and uh, incorporate it with some guitars or bass or whatever, we really all want to be locked in that same groove. And that's easy to do as humans when we're all together and we're in the groove and we've played and practiced many times. Um, once we're in the zone, we're locked in. But that's not always the case uh, with digital music. Uh, and that's why humanization is such a big part of the, the ongoing conversation of, of music production these days. So without further ado, uh, we're going to show you how to to create this, all right? Uh, first off, your flex time uh, needs to be turned on in, in your DAW, whether it's going to be um, through a tool or through a menu option, it really doesn't matter. Here, we'll just show you a quick shortcut on the left-hand side of Logic Pro, okay, and the information pane, and just here where it says flex mode. Just go ahead and click on that, and we'll pull this down to rhythmic, how about that? Okay, and uh, it really doesn't change the clip uh, too much in any way, but what it does is provide you access to quantization. Uh, before that was not there. We'll go ahead and turn this off really quick and you can see that indeed that quantize option goes away. So let's turn that back on. Okay, and um, right now we don't really want to apply any kind of quantization, but this menu, the quantize menu, is actually where the groove template option lives. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click 
make groove template. And then let's bring in something simple like a guitar. We'll just use a simple factory uh, loop. So anyone using the same piece of software can follow along. And let's get something kind of muted so it's not dominating this beat. So we can actually kind of hear all of these here. Yeah. Actually, that one's pretty good. A little eight mile, but that's pretty good. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll bring that in. Let's just turn this off and let's spread this out so everyone can kind of see some detail in these samples here. Okay. And you can see right off the bat that there is a difference in timing between these two. It's fairly significant. So let's go ahead and listen to this as it is. Okay, um, it's not that bad. Um, but it's just not super tight. So let's do this. Let's uh, turn on rhythmic as well for the for this Chronicles muted guitar loop. And let's first let's set this to like a sixteenth note. Okay, and you saw that shift a little bit. Let's listen to it now. All right, and so so. Let's go ahead and we'll turn that off. You can see it shifts back. Now let's come down and grab that groove template. See, it's listed right here. Now, in reverse, we could make this the groove template, this guitar the groove template, and then apply that groove template to the beat. Um, so it's a pretty flexible option here. All right, so we've applied our, oops, <laughs> sorry, I just did what we were just talking about. Uh, so we're going to apply <laughs> the, the uh, drum break, and you can see that it just shifted all those notes pretty significantly. Now let's listen to the, the way that they sync together. That's pretty tight. Yeah. All right, so those two are working well together now. Uh, and, and that really kind of wraps up everything around um, how to make a groove template, how to apply a groove template. The only thing we haven't really touched on yet is how to remove one if we don't want to remove one. So let's say uh, the, we made this groove template by mistake and we want to remove it. So all we have to do is simply uh, click on this quantize menu um, and we'll select the the groove template in question that we want to remove okay <laughs> that really changed that and we'll go ahead and now while this is selected while it's got this little checkbox here we'll click remove okay uh, now a couple things to mention okay if if this has this groove template, uh, the, the groove template created from this beat is now applied to this guitar. If we were to remove this audio, this track from the project, that's going to break uh, the groove template that's been applied to this guitar. So if you're bringing something into your project uh, that you'd like to make a groove template from, but you don't necessarily want to use in your music, keep it in your project and just mute it. Okay? Um, you can do that any a number of ways. You can just cancel the output, whatever, bring down the fader. It really doesn't matter. Just keep it. Keep it in your project. Don't allow any volume to be heard. And that's going to allow your groove template to be um, functional in your project. This is probably the number one mistake that I get with students is uh, they follow all of the steps, they bring in something, they find a really good groove and they apply it to some things in their project, everything's hooking up nice, and then as they're going through and cleaning up their project at the end of their mix, they delete that file, that audio that the groove template was originally based upon, and it breaks the groove. Um, and if it's a subtle difference, maybe you're not going to notice if you haven't been you know tuned in all that well to to the actual groove um, because those things can be quite subtle at times uh, but you know it's those subtle touches that can make all the difference in the world so again uh, just keep the original audio that the groove template was derived from if you want your groove template to work in your project. All right, that's it. Um, we hope this helps. We hope it made sense. We hope it was uh, easy enough to follow along with. It should have been. Um, thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you again soon. Cheers.